it's day 699 so that means tomorrow is day 700 which basically means for 100 weeks solid i've been doing a video every day even when i've been ill with covid so i feel a little bit better this afternoon i didn't feel too good this morning but I feel warm enough now had a few paracetamol so i've come outside for a walk around get some fresh air i did say to myself i wasn't going to go outside at all today because the last few days i haven't got any better from it and every time i went outside and got cold and come in i felt worse but because this afternoon i've perked up a bit i've come outside so no planes in today's videos unless there's any up there well that was really good yesterday watching that past past four and a half hours of my life watching the planes landing at gatwick and the guy now is all over the internet He's, he broke the internet yesterday with uh, with him uh, narrating i suppose planes landing anyway a few things that's been going on as well in the world other than big storms is what's been happening in the ukraine well i was lucky enough to go out to the ukraine in 2015 in december and then again in 16 in the january saw lots of amazing things some of the blackest soil you've ever seen which if you look at the photograph i'll just put on the screen now you can see that and it's also feet deep like 30 foot deep that soil it's just amazing these soil deposits were left and during the second world war hitler actually tried to cart some of it back to germany and he did did succeed he took something like 300,000 tons worth of soil back or three million tons worth of soil back to germany and then spread it on the land there to improve it that is possibly one of the reasons why Putin wants to invade, because it is regarded very much as of the breadbasket of Europe. Anyway, we flew out there, me and my friend Rob, to look at different farms, but really we were helping Syngenta. So at the time, there'd been a the war, the, the, the Russians had invaded the Crimea to get access to the Black Sea. By doing that then, it made the, the country really unstable and the currency not very good. So what Syngenta wanted to do was sell them agricultural inputs gone funny the phone on it better if i turn around there we go turn around so they wanted to sell them agricultural inputs but because the currency had devalued 300 percent if they sent them like a pallet of fungicide that's worth say a thousand pound by the time they'd get around to paying them when they paid them in their local currency that might only be worth a few hundred pounds so what they cleverly did was they were trading agricultural inputs in exchange for wheat futures contracts so they'd say, right, well, we want 20 grams worth of chemical inputs. So on that particular day, or well, $20,000, I'll say it, it's easier. They would say, okay, that's fine. You can have all that. So on the 1st of August or the 1st of September, we want $20,000 worth of wheat off you. And what Syngenta would then do was trade that wheat on the USDA futures for, for then. So all the farmers had to do is they got all their inputs to grow the crops. And then in return, they just gave them the grain back that meant that Syngenta could then trade in a country with a volatile currency and a volatile market. But as long as they could get the physical grain, they couldn't lose and were essentially trading in dollars in that country at the time, which was a lot more stable sort of economy and uh, currency. So what they wanted me to do was go and talk to farmers about how we trade grain in the UK. And it's quite normal for us to trade grain in the UK by selling on wheat futures. So like last week, Wheat futures was a good price for September and November. So I sold some wheat that's currently growing over there for September. I also sold some as well for that I've got left in that shed for this week. So I'll put a chart on the screen now of the wheat futures prices that they closed on Friday. As you can see, they're up a little bit, lots of green on it. That's obviously because of the threat of war. So the prices have gone up a little bit. So it's, it's a bit of an opportunity to sell, sad but true. Anyway, while I was in Ukraine, went around the, we got shown around Kiev, and what really hit home was they had a war memorial, and the war memorial was this huge wall. And here we have a war memorial that has names on. That had names, but it also had colour photographs because the conflict was still ongoing in the Crimea, and the people that were dying, they obviously had colour pictures of them because it was recent. So that was really when it hit home, what was going on out there. And it was an amazing country. I got to go all over it. Went to some different farms, which you're now seeing pictures of now saw some really modern equipment to down to some sort of pretty basic equipment so some of the, the russian built tractors which we'd know as Belarus's, but out there depending on where you come from the either orange or the blue ended up in Kharkiv, which used to be the capital of ukraine but it isn't anymore it's obviously kiev and there's a guy i was talking to he farmed seventy thousand hectares of land but he'd lost a little bit because of the conflict because there was tanks already parked on it because he wasn't far at all from the russian border i think I think we were 70 miles from the Russian border and he was even closer still. So that was a kind of interesting, you know, we're, we're moaning about pigeons and he's 
moaning about tanks parked on his land. Great experience, great people. I went back a year, year or two years later with a group of farmers. So when I was chairman of our local agricultural discussion society, I arranged to go back and we took 20 farmers and we had a bus and we went all the way around, around sort of um, where I'd been before really, but around Ukraine. And then I've actually been again since, which was Friday the 13th, 2020. So just two years ago, so nearly now. And that's when I went round Chernobyl as well with two friends. So there's a few pictures of that. Such an eerie place, yet fascinating. So that, you know, the fur ground is, was just built and never used. And obviously the place was evacuated. They did try to clean the whole of Pripyat, which is the town that we've gone round, to then try and make it so that people could re-inhabit it. So they basically dug about six inches topsoil off the whole thing, dumped them across in an island in the river hopefully that it decontaminate it. Anyway, it didn't and they had to abandon it now. And that's how wildlife has took over like in these other pictures. Wild though also visited the woodpecker. So this is a picture of that now. It's a massive spying sort of sat uh, radio listening device that they put up to listen to if there's any sort of stray missiles coming because it was during the Cold War. And so that no one knew where it was. They, called, they, they built it in such a place where you couldn't see it from any road and the only road into it I had a sign at the end saying it's a summer camp for children but really there's about 3,000 people lived in a little village next to this sort of spying device and they listened out to what the rest of the world was up to and whether there's any nuclear tests going on between them and um, the rest of the world so that that was pretty fascinating and mind-blowing as well the size of it today's video is a little bit of a mash-up because i have been ill but Yesterday they noticed a leak on the John Deere and yesterday's video ended up too long so I cut it out but this is what was going on with the John Deere. We're using the 7.7 yesterday and it's got an oil leak on the filter so rather than take it off and mess with it we're just going to get a new filter for it and give it a service and hopefully that'll stop that oil leak that's coming off there because when it got warm it was actually dripping. Nothing major. Also as well the other night we had some boiler suits delivered by Morris Corfield so Kim kindly come and drop them off. Her brother watches the video so Here's Kim dropping the boiler suits off. Covid boiler suit deliveries from class. What a service. One, throw it. Whee! And then now I'll go and do the birthday bumper. So the Bateman is behind me, so I'm going to get my pen out, I'm going to write the names on it and then um, show you. I just propped my phone up on this Merlot. I thought, I'm going to time lapse of me writing the names on. But stupidly, I can't do that because everyone's name is in my phone because when they send, the, send it on Instagram in the morning, it'll screenshot it, so I need to read the screenshots. So I can't do a time lapse to write the names on. But I'll write the names on and we'll talk about them. This is the birthday bumper. It is too big for me to read them all out, so you're going to have to pause it if it's your birthday today. So happy birthday, everyone. And if it is your birthday, happy birthday as well if you're not on there. Now, a random thing was sent to me yesterday, but it's not random. It's relevant to what I was talking about, about jet fuel and things like that. So... An A380's fuel will last it a day when it's full and that'll run a 3,000 acre farm for 11 years and produce all this produce. So a guy sent it me on, I think Instagram or Facebook, this, this sort of killer fact, we like a killer fact. So it's on the screen at the moment now. So pause it if you want to read it in a bit more detail. But very interesting stats there. The other thing is as well is that you never notice the, the, the atmosphere is huge, absolutely huge. So when there's a plane up there burning flat out through a jet engine, just think of the emissions out of that. Now, if you were to park that in a building, it'd probably gas you in about three seconds flat. It'd fill an aircraft hangar, maybe, if you fired a jet up in a building. But for some reason, because it's up there, it's out of sight, out of mind. Whereas cows, they're down here, you can see them. That's the problem, isn't it, I suppose? But people don't want to give up going on holiday. People like going on holiday. So it's far easier to sort of, like, deflect the blame away from climate change and blame animals. Now, climate change is real. Can we stop it? No. We had an ice age, don't forget. So it's a excuse to tax, isn't it, basically? Talk about climate change, say things are bad, put a tax on them, generates revenue, shifts wealth around between different industries. So that, that's my opinion of it. It's, it's there to change. Man's moved it on, and we're not really accelerating as much as you'd think, especially not after the Industrial Revolution, really, where we were burning quite a lot of dirty fuels. Nice to see lots of people tagging me in because the hats have been arriving. A few, obviously, we had post problems with the post office, but they're getting through. Still a few left anyway, if you want to click the link below. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Bit of a mashup because, like I say, I'm ill. Normal business will hopefully resume pretty soon because I am getting really bored now. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and let me know how you're feeling today. I'm about 85% today, so how are you?
put a comment underneath if you if, see how you're feeling and ask your friends how they're feeling so thanks for watching and i'll see you all tomorrow